Hi, Mirabella residents. My name is Patricia Murphy, and I'm taping a lecture about how to read more. And thanks to COVID-19, I am spending more time in my personal library, which is here in my home. Um, this is our fiction section. We have other sections for memoir and poetry. I'm a family of avid readers, and I want to share my love of reading with you. So I'm going to share my screen with you and uh, show you a few things that I do to keep track of my reading and motivate myself, but also how I um, can read a ton of books without necessarily having a private library. So I'm gonna give you some tips about uh, using the ASU library, but also the City of Phoenix library. And um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the, what's actually social media for readers. It's called Goodreads. And it's one of the ways that I really motivate myself to read. And it's one of the ways I keep track of the books that I read. Before I get started, I do wanna introduce myself. I am in my, or I just finished my 27th year of teaching at ASU. I've taught over 250 courses. Um, I teach mostly creative writing and magazine production. I'm the founding editor of the Online Literary Review Superstition Review. I'm originally from Cincinnati, Ohio, and I still have family there and in Minnesota. I actually don't have any family in Phoenix at all. I'm trained as a poet and prose writer. While my full-time teaching job is to mentor students through all the steps of running the magazine, Superstition Review, I also have a little bit of part-time job teaching travel writing for ASU Online, and I developed that course for them in 2011, and I teach it about four times a year, so I've taught it maybe 30 or 40 times. <laughs> I love teaching that class. It's one of my favorites. I am an avid traveler. I've been to 50 countries. My last trip was to Morocco. And I love hiking, swimming, biking, cooking, traveling, and obviously reading, which I'm going to talk to you about now. So one of the reasons I love using Goodreads to shelve my books is because I'm one of those people who uh, forgets what I've read and watched. <laughs> I'm really especially bad at movies. <laughs> But I can be bad at books too. So I'll pick up a book and read maybe a hundred pages and say, oh my gosh, I've already read this. <laughs> and I do love rereading books, but also as an editor, I do like always um, championing, championing new writers and new books. So I'm always trying to read stuff that's out that's new. What I love about Goodreads is that it's Facebook for readers basically. And um, so you have a, a profile page. So this is my profile page. I'm also an author. So I have a few features here that uh, just someone who's a casual reader wouldn't have. Uh, for instance, my books are listed here. But your page is going to show uh, any books that you're currently reading, uh, your friends, things like that. Your home feed. I really love this feature because what happens in Goodreads is you really curate a group of readers who you respect and whose tastes are similar to yours. And I love scrolling through updates to see what my friends have been reading. And what's wonderful is you can add it to your want to read shelf just by clicking the link here. So for instance, I just read The Museum of Whales You Will Never See. This was a, uh, an author that we interviewed for my magazine, and I got to read the book before it was published, which was always nice. And I wrote a review of it, and then actually Carolyn Wood saw this on my update feed, and she added it to her to-read list. So it's really fun to um, browse through other, what other people are reading. You also have a currently reading shelf, and I find this really helpful because sometimes I forget everything that's in my to be read pile, and this helps me remember, oh yeah, I was reading, I usually have probably seven books going at a time, so 
Um, right now, I'm listening to Hell and Other Destinations, which is Madeline Albright's new memoir. It's gorgeous. It's so fun. Um, so I'm about halfway through that. I'm reading Wishbone, a memoir and fractures, and I'm reading that on my Kindle. And then some of these books are for classes that I'm teaching in fall as well. But I'm also reading ah, Keeping Time by Tom Legendre, who is a dear friend of mine. We've known each other for 25 years. So uh, I've, I'm halfway through his new novel. So uh, you can also have other shelves that you use to catalog the books that you're reading. So I have a, a lot of interests. I like to read about conservation. I like essay collections. I love fiction writing, food writing. I really love memoir. Um, I also like just straight nonfiction. I like a lot of political um, books and a lot of poetry. Every April, I read one book of poetry a day. And in fact, this April, I was able to do that completely free. <laughs> I read 30 new poetry books completely free by using the Phoenix Library and the ASU Library. And that was a fun goal and I chronicled that on my social networks too. So as you can see, um, you can also come here. So for instance, if you want to know what I read in terms of, say, um, poetry, you can come look at my shelf and you can see all of the poetry books that I've read and I've, uh, well, um, since I started cataloging them on Goodreads. <laughs> so I have 291 here. And I do like to write reviews. You can rate them. If you don't want to rate, you don't have to. But um, I really love writing reviews to help jog my memory when I look back upon the poems or, or the books. And I also like to write reviews to support the authors because this makes a huge difference, especially for the smaller authors. Like, for instance, Martha Solano is somebody that we've published in our magazine and she's wonderful, she's brilliant, and she's such a lovely human. And I really wanted to support her. As you can see, she, poetry books don't get a lot of reviews. She's had five reviews and 13 ratings. So I was really happy to give her that boost because it does help people choose what they want to read. So that's what a um, listing looks like for a book. You'll be able to see who else has reviewed it. Sometimes these reviews can get pretty interesting. I enjoy reading them. I like hearing what other people feel about the books. There is also um, a reading challenge feature. And a lot of my friends use this. They challenge themselves to read a certain number of books a year. So I have a challenge this year to read 120 books. And I've read 78 so far, so I'm 34 ahead of schedule. And that's a lot. A lot of that is to do with probably COVID because I can't go anywhere. <laughs> but also my April reading. So what I love about the, um, the challenge feature is you're able to look back on previous years. So in 2019, I read 127 books and um, you can look back through them here. So uh, it's really fun to go back and look at your life in books and remember some of the books that you read it also helps you to, if anybody wants you to recommend a book, that's a great way that you can catalog it. So that's Goodreads. I really enjoy it. And um, even if you don't use the social feature, um, it's a great way to get information about books. It gives you recommendations and it's a very visual tool for cataloging what you read. So I want to talk a little bit about using the Phoenix Public Library to get books. Now, obviously, at this moment, we can't go to the library. Um, what's nice for you is that when the library does open, you can get to the Phoenix Public li Library just right on the, the light rail. You can walk right up Mill Avenue, catch the light rail, and it'll drop you off right at Burton Bar. And Burton Bar is a gorgeous library and um, really, really stunning architecture, great building. And it has some good restaurants around, so you can really make an afternoon out of it. 
Now the Tempe Public Library is also close too. It is right down Rural Road and it's right at the 60 and Rural Road and it's a smaller library so a little bit easier to navigate. They have some great events there too. They hold um, a uh, book festival once a year and they also do have a lot of readings and things like that. So you do have two um, public libraries that you can physically go to in addition to the ASU library, which I'll talk about in a second. However, what I love is that you can read eBooks on any device with the Kindle app. You can listen to audiobooks using Libby or Overdrive. And the feature on the Phoenix Digital Library allows you to catalog books too. And I'm gonna show you how I use that. Um, so I'll show you what the Kindle looks like. You can use the Kindle on any device. So I'm on a, I'm on a MacBook Air right now, but I also use Kindle on my um, phone. I use Kindle on my iPad and I use Kindle on my iMac as well. And you can set up cat collections here. So you can see I have six to read. Some of these are for school. I'm teaching a class in fall on literary publishing. So I'm using Before and After the Book Deal, Complete Guide to Being a Writer, Writer's Market, et cetera, et cetera. I have in total 339 books in my Kindle collection. Some of these I've purchased. Some of them are free. Kindle or Amazon, actually, if you are a Prime member, every month they have certain titles that are totally free. And so, for instance, Wholly Unraveled by Keely Bergen is a book that I read two weeks ago from Amazon for free. Some of these I bought, like Odes to Lithium, I bought usually Kindle books are about $10. Um, so <laughs> I don't like to buy too many Kindle books, especially because I can get so many of them from the library. So here's what what the inner looks like at the Greater Phoenix Digital Library. And as long as you have a library card, you can log into this. And it you don't have to be a Phoenix resident, you can be a Tempe resident or Chandler or whatever it is. So this is what the account looks like. So you have your loans here. You can see a here's Madeline's book. It expires in eight days. You can listen to it in your browser on your computer if you want. I always download it onto my phone. And I like to, I usually walk about 25 miles a week and I always listen to a book while I walk. Um, I like to listen to a book while I'm tidying the house and doing housework. Um, and sometimes when I'm just too tired, my eyes get tired. I just love to listen to an audio book um, sitting on the couch, just resting. I find it really relaxing. So those are the loans that I have. And then uh, I also have an area for holds. You can borrow 10 books at a time, and then you can also place eight books on hold at a time. So some of the audiobooks, especially the more popular audiobooks, um, like for instance, I'm trying to read Catch and Kill by Ronan Farrow, and it's 21 weeks. <laughs> so sometimes they come up sooner, it depends. Um, they just changed, they used to, um, let you have them for 14 days. Um, but I was finding that it wasn't enough. So they did extend it to 21 days. So you can have an audio book for 21 days. An ebook you can only have for 14 days. So it's a little bit quicker turnaround. But you also can give it back earlier. So these estimates are based on the, if everybody on the wait list keeps them the entire time. So there are times, it's kind of fun because there are times when I'll get <laughs> six in the queue, especially when I'm traveling. I love to listen to books on the plane or even in the airport because, you know, it's crazy and you just, <laughs> sometimes you don't necessarily want to um, interact much. But um, before I go on a trip, I always try to load a bunch of audiobooks on my phone. And um, so some of the holds will come through. They also have what's called a wish list, and you can put endless amount of titles in your wish list. And so I have 49 right now. And if you click on available now, some of them are always going to be available. So that's nice when you're going on a trip. So you can just load them on and not have to wait and see if you're going to be able to get something. 
So that's the interface for um, the Greater Phoenix Digital Library. In, you know what, let me just, I can show you what it's like to just borrow, oh, Sharks in, Sharks in the Rivers by Ada Limon is, uh, Ada Limon is an amazing poet. So I'll show you what it looks like when you go to borrow something. Um, so eBooks, you can do either seven days or 14 days. I'll do 14. You just hit borrow and it clicks you through to, you can either read it in your browser, you can download it to your device. I always read with Kindle. And one of the reasons I like to read with Kindle, this is just going to push me to my Amazon Prime account and it'll deliver it to whatever de device I want. I'm just going to get the library book to, uh, send it to my iPad. Um, here's why I like to read in Kindle. Kindle allows you to um, make notes and um, it's also the Kindle app, uh, I find, makes things very easy to read. You can change the size, you can change the color. Um, so what I like to do is go to click into the table of contents and have more of an experience like you would with an actual physical book. So you can scroll through, you see the table of contents, um, you get the title page, and then you start going through and reading the poetry. And so for instance, I, when I read books of poems, I love to, um, pick out my favorite lines so that I can look at them again. So you can highlight things and create a notebook. And um, so you get to, you, you get to um, kind of interact with the text in, in the way that you would with a, um, a hard copy book. That's my dog trying to get in, sorry. <laughs> He'll go away in a sec. So that's how the interface on Kindle works. And that's how you check something out from the Phoenix library. And I find that it's so useful and easy to navigate. And it's really easy to have free books going at all times. Now for the ASU library, there are a couple really neat features. You can access some full text books and articles online that you'd like I've downloaded books um, from the ASU library. They have a lot of contracts with publishers and with um, distributors so that they are allowing you to get full text books um, during these times, that's nice. If you want physical books, what's great is you can just create a list with your account and they'll get the books for you and keep them right at the front desk. You just walk in and show your library card and um, you can pick them up that way. So one of the things that I like to do is once I decide that I wanna read a book, so say for instance, I have, I don't know, let's look at my want to read page on Goodreads. Every once in a while, I'll go to my want to read page on Goodreads I have 123 books on it. <laughs> so say, for instance, I want to read, oh, here's one. My friend just told me about this book called Grace by Paul Lynch. So what I'll, what I'll end up doing is I'll go first to see if the Phoenix Library has it. So I'll conduct a search over here. Ooh, wow, look, they have it available. So that's awesome. So I would go ahead and get it there. But then I can also look at the ASU library. Let's do a little search for it here. I wonder if they have it. Now, the ASU library search, I find a little bit more <laughs> difficult than the Phoenix library search because it's going to first look at all resources. Um, you can narrow it down to the library catalog, but the eBooks won't be in there. Okay, here it is. So it's available 
at the Hayden Library, Sun Devil Reads. So one of the things we can do is add it, add the item to our favorites list. And um, one, what I like to do is wait until I have kind of like a critical mass of books there before I go and pick them up. Um, it'll show up here. And um, what you can do is just choose the ones you want to be um, delivered to you. Oh my gosh, I want to read all of these, <laughs> but I can't yet because they're not, um, the library isn't lending books right now due to COVID, but um, you can select all and just have them delivered to the li li library at Hayden and you can go pick them up. So that's a joy as well. Now, normally, if I can't find the book in the Phoenix Library or the ASU Library, I do use Audible. Now, Audible is a little expensive. It's like $17 a month. But sometimes if I really, really, really want to read a book and I can't find it at any library, um, I will use Audible as my last resort. So um, Audible, you can you can um let's see here's what i want to show you on audible let me show you my library because i want to show you one of my favorite books that i've read all year and that was uh oh hold on one sec um if you've ever heard of the poet carolyn forche she has a new book of poems out but she also has no sorry that's my puppy <laughs> Oh my gosh, this memoir was one of the most amazing things I've read all year. And um, so it's 12 hours. That means you get a lot of walking done or riding your bike or whatever you do while you're listening to it. You can listen to it in your browser. You can download it onto your phone and listen to it that way. You can give it as a gift, but um, Audible, you're going to pay about $17 for each title. Um, so I use it kind of as the last resort when I can't get a book for free at the libraries. So let's see. Yeah, I use Audible for audiobooks, not available at the library. Okay, so I think the last thing that I wanted to show you is just I want to walk through some of um, four books that are. I really recommend. I just read On Fire, The Case for the New Green Deal by Naomi Klein. And she is a best-selling author, um, very, very smart person who is writing about um, really not just climate change, but also the, uh, the economic impacts of um, using too many resources. And this was a very timely read, really well written. She's quite passionate. I, I really enjoyed this book. Uh, here's what you have heard is true. I already mentioned her, Carolyn Forche. Really, really gorgeous. And so they use the term lyrical. It's really poetic. She's obviously a very famous poet, um, a poet first and a memoir second. Um, she's won the National Book Award, uh, or she was a finalist for, uh, this book was a finalist in nonfiction for 2019. It's one of the best things that I've read in the past couple of years. Another book that I really enjoyed that is fitting for us in Arizona is First by uh, Sandra Day O'Connor. And this is a, uh, um, just a, a really compelling story. What I loved about this book is that if you've lived in Arizona for any amount of time, you're going to know so many of the people that she mentions. And there's really uh, a great dis discussion and description of why Arizona politics are so different. <laughs> I'm from Ohio and our, the politics in Ohio are completely different from the politics in Arizona. Uh, so this is a book that I really enjoyed and I learned a lot from. 
This is a fun little book I wanted to show you, which is called My Morning Routine, How Successful People Start Every Day Inspired. And the structure of the book gets a little bit repetitive because every single one just talks about what they do at the beginning of their day. But I found it really a really fun book to pick up and read and put down and pick up and read, one that you come back to. Um, it was just fascinating to hear about, uh, a, a, you know, it looks at kind of famous people. So for instance, Marie Kondo, <laughs> who is, you know, made us get rid of everything. Uh, and a lot of other, a lot of other people. So those are some of the fun books that I've read recently that I thought you might enjoy. And I really hope you uh, enjoy the assets at the Phoenix Public Library and at the ASU Library because it, the ASU Library uh, has unbelievable resources that I can't wait for you to enjoy. Thanks so much.